So this is a, a picture of actually what's going on in, in a preamp. This is the preamp that um, um, we designed for Storm. It's basically, there's a lot of functionality. It's just a 2.8 by 2.8 millimeter die. Um, you know, it's broken up into the various functions that were on the block diagram I showed before. Obviously, there's a digital control um, that's controlled by the, the CPU system. When you turn the volts per division knob, the CPU system detects that, and then it sends some information to this guy to change the gain settings in the amp. Um, there's an input, a, fi a, a one mega ohm input amp here, and then there's the 50 ohm input amp. Ultimately, those guys have to combine um, at this point here and then go into another stepped gain amp. Um, to set the course gain settings. And then there's also a variable um, variable gain amp in here that is controlled by a 10-bit DAC. So we have all that gain range um, and uh, gain resolution. And then this guy drives um, the output. Um, there's actually two outputs here um, that are driven in parallel. And I'll talk about that in a minute when we show um, the ADC, why that's so. And then the, the trigger outputs are down here. And their levels, the, the filters are controlled, and the trigger level um, where those comparators actually fire is controlled by more 10-bit DACs. So um, pretty much all of the green things that were in the, the green boxes that were in the, the, the uh, block diagram I showed before are handled in an integrated sense on this little 2.8 by 2.8 millimeter die. Um, ADCs, we've got a, a pretty big history of ADC development in the company too. Um, in my opinion, uh, for, for what we do, um, the ADCs that we developed internal to the company are the best in the world, um, and they have been for quite a long time. Um, um, about the time that I uh, arrived here, we were just finishing up a, uh, um, our first um, well, it's, it's our last, I should say, our, our last ADC in, uh, in Colorado Springs. I worked on this one a little bit. Um, this one was done with bipolar technology, and it was an internal process that we called HP25. And it had a 2 gigasample sample rate and 8-bit uh, resolution. And then we, we started seeing the, you know, the, the, this wave of CMOS. Back in those days, they were saying bipolar was dead before communication, cell phones and everything were, were there. You know, why would you want to do anything expensive bipolar when you can do stuff in cheap CMOS? So there was a, um, a big, uh, a big thrust by the company recognized by, uh, HP Labs at the time that we really need to access some of the CMOS. That was one of the reasons because that was considered cheaper and more mainstream and there was a lot of money being put into CMOS process development. The other thing is there was a desire to want to put memory on the IC for certain applications because if the memory is on the IC, you can stuff that memory a lot faster for parasitic reasons too than you can stuff it off chip. Um, so initially we wanted to have memory capability on the IC too. That was a secondary reason that I remember, I think. I don't know if it's in that order or not, um, why we were looking at CMOS. But so our first um, uh, ADC that, that um, Agilent Labs or HP Labs did for us was this five giga sample, eight bit guy. And that was in um, a premier process of the time in the 90, late 90s, um, 0.35 micron CMOS. And then um, um, about seven years later, in order to keep up with the bandwidths of the front ends that we had, we needed to do a faster sample rate ADC. Still 8-bit, but this provided 20 giga samples. And all these numbers here at the time were very, very cutting edge. Um, you know, you, you would be hard pressed to find this capability back in 2003 um, anywhere else outside the company. Um, a couple other companies tested measurement, maybe Tektronix, Boo, LaCroix, Boo, <laughs> you know, um, had, had um, people developing ADCs, but their ADC technologies were tended to be about a, a, a generation behind um, some of this stuff. And so then our, our latest and greatest is a thing called uh, Stingray that came out in 2012, and that's a whopping 64 giga samples and 10 bits um, on the same part, um, and that's a, a package that is uh, um, it's it's basically a multi-chip package. So here's the ADC. I don't have a screenshot of it or a, a, a die photo, but if you look at this package, you'll actually see two ICs on there. One of them is the the uh, CMOS ADC, and then the other one is this. Um, it's another um, buffer. Remember when I said we needed to provide impedance conversion? Well, it turns out because we're doing 64 giga samples, what that really is is 160 slices of 400 mega sample ADC all in parallel and time interleaved. Each one of those 
you know, to fan out that much, there's quite a bit of capacitance you have to drive. And it turns out there's about two picofarads of capacitance looking into that guy. So in order to get, to get that signal up to about, and, and, and the bandwidth that we require here is right around 10 gigahertz at that interface. In order to get that into the, um, the ADC, we have to have an output impedance in the sub, sub 15 ohm range. Um, so it takes just a lot of power to drive that. And the, the output amplifier that drives that capacitance is standing 120 milliamps. You know, so that's a huge amount of current just in one of those output amps. And there's actually four of them in this guy because the nice thing about this thing is it can be, it can be banked. In other words, you can have separate ports where you can use a portion of the ADC per channel. So for instance, the, what, what we're doing here is there's only one of these for four channels of storm. And we can, we can, um, use either, um, the 16 giga sample banks in, in terms of four to do 16 giga samples across four channels. Or remember there was a, um, um, a, uh, second output. Let's see. Yeah. There actually the second output is, of Mustang isn't used for this because we do the switching here. But if you, if you, um, basically take one channel of one of the, the front end preamps, which I call Mustang, that was the code name for it. You can actually inside this chip, um, demux that to two of the buffers and drive, um, both two banks here. So you can do 32 giga sample, um, sampling on one channel, um, on this side and then 32 giga samples on one channel here. So you can do two channels at 32 giga samples a piece or four channels at, at 16 giga samples a piece. So that gives us some flexibility in terms of, uh, you know, having one ADC if we want to sample higher for the eight gigahertz mode or four channels, um, at 16 if we want to do four gigahertz on four channels. And then see the, uh, this is just a picture of the S series board. Um, Ryan let me borrow one here. Um, I was going to pass that around, but I guess I could. I mean, it's, it's not a, he, it's, he, he tells me he doesn't expect it to work necessarily when he gets it back, but he would like it to. <laughs> yeah. And you can feel how heavy it is too. There's a lot of stuff going on there, but basically this is an earlier version. Um, you know, and so uh, uh, they decided to go with different color codes based on versions so they could rec easily recognize them. Um, this blue one was an earlier version, might not have the same exact locations, but ultimately you have the four inputs are along here. There's a, there's a basically a B and C on the other side. This board in frame, in, in this, the uh, storm frame actually sits vertically. Um, and so these guys are sticking out where the B and C's are. Um, along the front of that picture that I showed earlier. And so there's four channels. Um, you come in through a B and C, and then there's this, this is the little electronic attenuator that goes into the 50 ohm input of the preamp. And then we split off this little relay here is the pass select relay. Um, then that drives another relay that sets the attenuation for the, for the mega ohms. And then that takes um, another path that goes into the high Z input of the preamp. And then those signals come out and then they go into, this is the uh, Stingray ADC. All four of those converge on one ADC like we talked about. Um, and then there's some, the, the trigger signals come out of um, this guy on separate lines and feed into this complex trigger chip. Um, from the Stingray part, um, you've got a 64 giga samples happening. You know, that's a lot of data. Um, our uh, digital ASIC team which, um, you know, is composed of several people in here, um, you know, they have the task of swallowing up all that data, doing things like filtering. That's probably one of the easier things that they do. <laughs> and then doing all of the uh, complex DSP functions in order to quickly, as quickly as possible, get as much of that data to the screen as fast as possible. So we have the fastest update rates. You know, you can actually see it almost looks like, you know, live when you're doing everything, you know. Um, and uh, on top of that, the um, the uh, scope, you know, will display along the bottom. You can do all kinds of measurements, peak to peak measurements, RMS measurements, you know, all the trigger functions and everything. Um, all of that, a lot of that is calculated, some in hardware for fastest performance, and then some of that's offloaded, you know, I into a uh, system FPGA to do additional calculations. And then here's the big memory bank that these guys ultimately drive. Um, and then there's also a FPGA over here that handles the, uh, the digital input functions and then um, applies those to the various um, pieces parts here. So those can be processed in parallel to the analog stuff.